Diana Ross is a legendary American singer and actress. She rose to fame as the lead singer of the girl group The Supremes, which became Motown's most successful act in the 60s and one of the world's best-selling girl groups of all time. After leaving the group in 1970, she launched a successful solo career, with many huge hits across the next few decades. Ross was named the Female Entertainer of the Century by Billboard magazine. She also starred in many movies. Because of so much fame, Ross was known all over the world for her eccentric lifestyle. From struggling in a low-income black neighborhood to receiving an award from Barack Obama, let's take a look at Diana Ross's amazing life and how she fully lived it. Diana Ross is one of the most successful female singers in all of the rock and roll era. She was also one of the most important musical talents to come out of Detroit, which is no small feat considering the many artists and influences that the Michigan City has had on America's music industry. Motown, soul, pop, and disco were all areas that Diana Ross excelled in, and over her lifetime and her time with the Supremes, she recorded 54 albums and sold more than 100 million records. Only the Beatles have had more hit singles than Ross, which shows just how big she was. She has lived most of her life in the limelight, which has led her to achieving international fame and enough wealth to make her one of the richest people in Hollywood. Diana Ross has an estimated net worth of 250 million, but being a black woman in a male-dominated profession in the 20th century, it just wasn't easy for her. Diana Ross had to go through a lot of changes and challenges in life. It's important to know how far she has come in life, so let's take a look back at her life and see how far she has come. Early Years Diana Ross was born on March 26th in 1944 in Detroit, Michigan. She was the second of six children of Fred and Ernestine Ross, who lived in Brewster Douglas, one of Detroit's low-income housing districts. Because of her tight-knit family, Ross grew up virtually unaware of the harsh life that surrounded her. While her family was active in the Baptist church choir, Diana learned secular music from a cousin. She played baseball and took tap dancing classes and majorette lessons at Brewster Center. At age 14, Ross tried out for a part in a school musical, but was turned down. The brief failure turned into good fortune, as she was invited to sing with the Primettes, a girls' vocal group that included Florence Ballard and Mary Wilson among its members. She sang with the Primettes throughout her high school years at Cass Technical High School, where she took sewing and fashion design courses. Because Diana was from a poor neighborhood, she had to struggle more than others on the block. It took the group a little while, but it went on to become the internationally successful 1960s R&B and pop trio The Supremes. Korea. Signed to Midtown Records by famed producer and label founder Barry Gordy Jr. in 1961, the Supremes scored their first number one hit with Where Did Our Love Go in 1964. The trio then broke music records by having a streak of four additional singles top the charts in the next two years. The group became the first US group ever to have five songs in a row reach the number one spot. The group changed its name to Diana Ross and the Supremes, and that's when the group entered into a new phase, which was short-lived. A couple more hits, and Ross finally left the group in 1970 to start her solo career. Motown Records invested heavily in her new career, which debuted with Reach Out and Touch in 1970. Many changes began to take place in her personal life as well. She had helped out with Jackson 5 get its start with Motown and Barry Gordy, and in 1971, Ross was married to Robert Sylvesterstein, a pop music manager, with whom she had three daughters, Rhonda, Tracy, and Chudney. Ross was cast as the legendary jazz singer Billie Holiday in the Motown film production Lady Sings the Blues. Her critically acclaimed performance earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. Her next film was Mahogany, 1975, from which her theme from Mahogany, 1976, was nominated for the Academy Awards Best Song in a Motion Picture and topped the record charts once again. After her third daughter was born in 1975, she and Silberstein were divorced. Ross's hit parade continued with the number one, Love Hangover, and in the next two decades, Ross came out with many, many more albums and number one hits. Ross's sales gradually faltered, but she continued to record and perform. Returning to Motown Records near the end of the 1980s, she released the albums Working Overtime and The Force Behind the Power, the latter having significant international success with its singles. In the 1990s, Ross made several appearances on the small screen and had to go through a lot of struggles too. 
1996, her brother, Arthur Ross, and his wife were found smothered to death in Oak Park, Michigan. In September of 1996, two men, Ricky Brooks and Remmel Howard, were charged with the killings. Police had no motive at the time, only to say that things like drugs were involved. She got into a dispute with a security guard in 1999 at London's Heathrow Airport, and as a result was arrested and detained for four hours before being released. In late 2002, she was arrested for driving under the influence in Tuscan, Arizona, for which she later was briefly sentenced to jail. Despite her personal and professional ups and downs, Ross has withstood the test of time as a performer with a career that spans more than four decades. She has won major awards, including a Golden Globe, a Tony, and several American Music Awards. In 2012, Ross received a Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement. It would become her first Grammy ever, despite having been nominated 12 times. Four years later, Ross received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama, the nation's highest civilian honor. In 2009, she was also asked by Michael Jackson to become his kid's alternative guardian. Diana Ross has lived a pretty lavish life in the limelight. Not many stars stay relevant for four decades. With so much fame and success, Ross has been able to amass a huge amount of wealth. Her net worth is worth more than $250 million. And even though she is 77 years old, Ross lives a pretty lavish life compared to her age fellows. House Diana Ross owns some pretty lavish properties, and the legendary singer has been a resident of Greenwich, Connecticut for several years. Her most recent real estate grab in Greenwich was in 2006, when the Supreme Diva purchased a mansion on five acres. Built in 1930 and located in the Bell Heaven community, the colonial-style home includes a tennis court, swimming pool, and has 12,500 plus square feet. The house cost her $17 million, and Ross also spent a few million on renovations. Diana Ross also owns a three-bed, three-bath, 2518-square-foot home in Venice, California, which she purchased in 2004. Miss Ross doesn't have to go very far to get her feet wet either, as the home's located just a short walking distance from the beach. Another home that she has is in LA. The artist lives here part-time, and mostly rents out the place. She purchased a 5-bed, 7-bath, 6,413-square-foot home in August of 1996 for $725,000, according to public records. Cars The most famous car Diana Ross has owned in her career was the 1967 Jaguar E-Type. When the Jaguar E-Type was unveiled at the 1961 Geneva Salon, its stunning proportions and graceful curves left the crowd awestruck. But the love for the Jaguar wasn't merely a shallow affair for its captivating design. The E-Type was a serious performance bargain. Priced at nearly a third of the cost of competing Ferraris, the new car was not only cheaper but faster too. On Halloween 1967, the keys to this opalescent, golden sand-colored British roadster were handed to none other than Diana Ross. She'd just broken into the mainstream and, after buying her mother a house, her first gift to herself was this stunning XKE, with its exquisite pearl finish, professional restoration, and originally ordered by one of America's most influential and pivotal artists, this 1967 Jaguar E-Type captures the class of the 1960s celebrities. Diana Ross has often been seen with a Chrysler 300 too. This appears to be her daily driver. There is no doubt that she could have any car she wanted, and she had plenty of exotic cars over the years but it appears this is what her most comfortable way of driving will be today. Prior to the Chrysler 300, she'd been seen driving a red Dodge truck. Because she's almost 80 now, Diana probably doesn't invest too much in cars. Because if you can't drive them, what's the point? Diana Ross has been blessing us with her magic since the 60s. Even if you don't know much about her, there's a chance that you've heard her music or seen her performance everywhere. She's been a part of the American culture for the last five decades. Ross is so successful that in 1993, the Guinness Book of World Records declared her as the most successful female music artist in history due to her success in the United States and United Kingdom. Ross has had more hits than any other female artist in the charts, with a career total of 70 hit singles with her work with the Supremes and as a solo artist. And she's still going strong. More power to this amazing woman. That's all for today, folks. Diana Ross has shown us to never give up on our dreams and to work hard and overcome the struggles in life. Hope you enjoyed the video. Which one of her songs do you like the most? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content daily.